power, love, strength, unity, everlasting life, everlasting existence, divine favor to all my black, beautiful brothers and sisters. Today, we have update number five. We have update number five. Today, we're going to be talking about our legal remedy for American slavery in 2020. Um, we're actually talking about, if you've heard, you, you've probably heard me talk about case number 4443. Um, when we talk about our legal remedy for slavery, the Exodus paperwork, if you heard me mention the Exodus lawsuit, the Exodus paperwork. This is what we're going to be talking about, the lawsuit that we have currently with Donald Trump doing business as the United States. I don't know why they didn't, didn't include that in here, but we will uh, get to that in the estate of Abraham Lincoln, who was also doing business as the United States. Um, and we filed the legal argument. Um, <clears throat> last week, we covered the jurisdiction and, and standing of BAM. 2027 and, and the 40 diplomatic embassy to city rollout plan for black America if you missed that update go back and get it right there is pinned to the top of the page but after this one it's going to be under this one because uh, update 5 will be pinned to the top of the page after this live so um, uh, as y'all know recap quick recap we're standing on the jurisdiction of the African Union um, the African Union was created on May 25th. That's coming up on Monday. So y'all get ready for Afri Africa Day. You know, just in case y'all didn't know Africa Liberation Day was a thing. It is. It actually is a real thing. It's uh, celebrated on the 25th of May. It commemorates the uh, foundation right here of the Organization of the African Unity on uh, 25th of May 1963. Um, that organization changed its name to the African Union. And that is the jurisdiction which we have a partnership with you, the White House already, the United States of America already. So this is a diplomatic relationship that we are encouraging black America to utilize um, during this day and time. Because, you know, ch trying to uh, attack this situation as individual citizens of the United States is not effective, has not been effective. So we must uh, attack this from our diplomatic platform as as an actual government body. Um, so um, to celebrate Africa Africa Day, I suggest everybody go ahead get your flag. This is uh, just going over this before we get started. Get your African Union flag from Amazon. Um, they ain't but six dollars, you know, seven dollars. You know what I'm saying? Get you some rest the rest of uh, the shipping on it so you can get it before May 25th, hopefully. Um, and then on May 25th, you can upload your videos and go live holding your African Union flag, declaring your jurisdiction as the sixth region, you know, of the African Union. Okay. Um, today is May 20th, which is the birthday of Mike Brown. We also want to shout out Mike Brown. Um, what he did was very important on the spiritual plane. Um, remember, there's two poles, you know, from the ancient days up until now. You have the royal side and the priest side. You know, like the royal side of today would be like the presidents, you know, prime ministers, the political side. Then you have the spiritual leadership. Remember, you always have both areas covered. What Mike Brown did was very important on the spiritual side, you know. And uh, I make sure to shout him out every time his, his birthday comes around. Um, you know, I already decoded that years ago. We're not going to go back into that. Um, also, shout out the good elder ancestor, Malcolm X. His birthday was yesterday as well, May 19th. He was born one day before Mike Brown. You know, so we want to shout him out as well before we get started. And with, uh, without further ado... Boom. We're going to bring you to page five of the complaint form that was filed in the Northern District Court. And let's just get right into this legal remedy. So on the complaint, they ask you, what are the facts underlying your claims? For example, what happened to you? Who did what? Was anyone else involved? Who else saw what happened? And so between 1916, this is our grievance as a black community, as a black race. Um, a God, you know, God's chosen people. 
between 1619 and 1865 licensed by the United States white Americans one manufactured slaves through forced human experimentation using trade secrets to subject naturally occurring people of African descent to a scientific manufacturing method of dehumanization understand what's being said here very very powerful we saying that white humans manufactured slaves okay through forced human experimentation using trade secrets listen to the terminology that's being utilized because this is how we found the loophole what we found here first of all you all need to understand what we what you what, what i'm reading to you is something that um none of our civil rights ancestors martin luther king malcolm x you name it you know what i'm saying none of them realized this information it was right there in front of their face the whole time um well maybe it wasn't maybe the cop maybe the intellectual property laws um you know i have to look at, at where the, where the intellectual property laws were during that time but regardless we have this information our generation has this two they reduced their genetic situation and status from natural people to subhuman conditions three reduced their legal status to real property and four trademarked and marketed them as slaves negroes niggers and blacks as a method of commerce regarded as american slavery lots that can be said about this first paragraph here but i'm gonna keep it moving just so y'all can get the information number two 1865 president of the united states abraham lincoln committed gross federal negligence and national deception by failing to suspend intellectual property rights from white americans in the 13th amendment people this is the loophole that we found through black panther through through the black panther violation and and lawsuit and legal criminal report really um investigating intellectual property law um inspired by you know me having to um file a criminal report on Disney and Marvel Studios for Black Panther it showed me a loophole through intellectual property that Abraham Lincoln committed gross federal negligence and national deception by, by failing to suspend intellectual property rights from white, white Americans in the 13th Amendment by researching Black Panther I realized that there was also intellectual property rights that was associated with the slaves being created and with slaves being dehumanized and with slaves being marketed and trademarked and sold as property there were intellectual property rights associated with that no one has ever told you that in the history of civil rights the history of black liberation the history of black struggle of black revolutions no one has ever told you about that about the institu institution of slavery in america no one has ever told you this this is the loophole this is the what was sealed up this is what the ancestors and the most high sealed up for us to use as a tool of liberation and escape and exodus because this is a legal argument with federal statutes federal codes federal federal points and legal points and arguments that they cannot weasel their way out of because there's no statute of limitations on trade secrets no statute of limitations on trade secrets that means the trade secrets that they were using in 1619 are still valid activated active and protected to this day still owned by white americans and their descendants by the original licensees man who let me let me calm down let me calm down okay so no one has ever told y'all this. So now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. This is what I mean by when we have something to stand on, people. We have something to stand on for our exodus. Um. Okay. <sighs> Retaining the constitutional legality for white Americans to benefit from owning the intellectual properties of dehumanization as a tra of one dehumanization as a trade secret method to reduce black people's genetic situation and status to the condition of a slave two slaves as scientific productions three slavery as a method of commerce four the words slave negro nigger and black as trademarks 
five derivative trade secrets for the slave manufacturing methods that continues to this day mm. did y'all let me did y'all get that I don't know if you let me get this one more time for you. President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, committed gross federal negligence and national deception by failing to suspend, revoke, cancel the intellectual property rights from white Americans in the 13th Amendment. Number one, we have the United States licensed the right to manufacture slaves and trademark slaves and keep us as property, but they never, they never canceled the intellectual property right to do so so we just proved with this particular legal argument that when white people say i shouldn't have to pay reparations because i never owned slaves that's a lie we now have the legal argument that proves all white americans whether you were here in the 1800s or not all free white americans are the legal intellectual property right owners of slavery as a method of commerce slaves as a scientific production dehumanization as a patentable trade secret intellectual property rights people all of these were supposed to be made illegal they are still legal to this day oh we just getting started yeah, I've been waiting. Y'all can imagine how long I've been waiting to tell y'all this. We filed this. Don't worry. We filed this pre-COVID-19. This was filed in 2019, October 2nd. Two days after we filed this, Donald Trump came on, 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 on TV and said that black Americans are finally starting to get credit for building this nation. And that's right. That's, that's exactly, absolutely right. Let me scroll you to the top. Let me just real quick. Let me show y'all what he may have meant by that. This is how we filed the paperwork. His Excellency Mount Zion Ambassador Muchiri, a.k.a. Prince Michael. That's me. In full capacity standing and status as Knox St. Michael, yours the second. That's because in my affidavit, I allotted myself and assigned myself the power to walk on the waters of commerce. Because we're, we know that the land of the sea and the land of the laws, and land, uh, laws <laughs> the laws of the land and the laws of the sea are two different situations. And so they, they pull trickery on that. On behalf of the black race, with full legal capacity, standing, and status, grandfathered from Shabahadi of prehistory, verifiable nations, verifi verifiable links to, nat to true nationality of our people, on behalf of the black race, coming from Mount Zion, the Muchiri, from the Ajiru, which means black people. So when they say that black has no standing, maybe not in federal court, but in international. And through international, being that this is, we are, I am, it, oh man, let me, let me not turn up, man. Let me not turn up. Black race now has standing. Black has standing now. Uh, let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. <sighs> The United States currently represented, we're talking about the facts underlying our claim, our legal argument. The United States currently represented by Donald J. Trump has historically assigned and leveraged the intellectual property rights of one, dehumanization as a historic manufacturing method to reduce the genetic situation and status of humans to the condition of a slave. Two, slaves as a historic scientific production. Three, slavery as a historic method of commerce. Four, trade secrets associated with the historic slave manufacturing process. And five, continues to manufacture slaves using updated manufacturing trade secrets for dehumanization. Six, has benefited and continues to benefit astronomically from unjust enrichment derived from the ownership of said intellectual properties, which is conclusively immoral and violates federal treaties governing human rights, rights of indigenous peoples, and the use of science and technology. Oh man, it's getting it's getting hot. It's getting hot. Irre irreparable injury. Explain why, and this is the the federal form saying to explain why, 
monetary damages at a later time will not adequately compensate you for the injuries you sustained, are sustaining, or will sustain as a result of the events described above or why such compensation could not be measured. The trade seekers used to manipulate the natural genetic situation of Africa's sixth region, which is black people in America, between 1619 and 1875, or I probably meant to say 65, continues to this day. It doesn't matter because it continues to this day with modified methodology and requires several gen generations to re repair to repair the generate to uh, sorry to repair the damage, according to the standard scientific method of reverse engineering. The true justice for for the crime of slave creation is the reversal of the methodology used to produce such vile realities. Many of the victims will not survive long enough. Let me let me slow this down for let me repeat that last line because we think many people <laughs> this was a powerful line, it might have went over a lot of people's heads. The true justice for the crime of slave creation is the reversal of creating a slave. Let me break this down. To to make somebody into a slave is a crime. To dehumanize somebody is a crime. But the true justice for doing that is not paying them money. The true justice for turning them into a slave is to turn them back into a human. Okay. The frog, the prince that became a frog, right? If you're a prince and somebody turns you into a frog, right? How do they compensate? How do they truly make up for that? Do they give you some money or give you some flies so you can eat? Well, here, here, now you have an unlasting or everlasting supply of flies that you can eat as a frog. And now we have just made good for our wrongdoing. No, that is not how it works. If you turn a prince into a frog, the only way to make good for your wrongdoing is to turn the frog back into the prince. Okay? We're talking about true justice now. Not capitalistic justice or, or commercial justice. We're talking about spiritual, natural, universal, ethical, moral, real, true justice. Let's be clear. So that's why we wrote... And the Most High showed this to me. So that's why we got you covered. I got you, my people. The true justice written on the complaint for the crime of slave creation is the reversal of the methodology used to produce such vile realities for those slaves. Many of the victims will not survive long enough to celebrate the repair of the damages suffered. The true monetary debt morally owed to those living today as slaves, Negroes, niggers, and blacks by virtue of their unreversed genetic situation and the intellectual property rights associated with it is nearly beyond calculability. And calculability, yeah. And a diverse range of distinct solutions must be successfully and separately initiated and completed by different generations of Africa's deserving sixth region of the African Union in America. Feel where I'm coming from. Step by step, they may have went over some people here. We're going to go slow. The true monetary debt morally owed to those living today as slaves, Negroes, niggers, and blacks by virtue of their unreversed genetic situation. Let me stop right there. White folks and even modern modern day black folks love to believe because they're living in an illusion called the matrix. And the matrix pumps the program that there are no longer slaves today. We like to promote this fallacy as an idea, as a fact that there actually are no more slaves. Hey, man, ain't no more slaves, man. Ain't nobody never been slaves. You know, your mama wouldn't slave, your grandma wouldn't slave with nobody today living the day. You, hold on. This is the the voice of the illusion, the conscious of the conscience of the matrix, which is the voice of the devil speaking into your subconscious. That wants you to believe it. This is not true. Did they ever reverse the activities that created slaves? 
Once again, let me ask, did they ever reverse the methodology, the methods, the activity, the actions that created and produced slaves? Did they ever reverse that? Okay. Slavery and slaves was not just a legal position or a legal condition. Slavery was a genetic condition, a psychological condition, a spiritual condition. And to abolish is to do away with in part. And this is all in the, in the legal argument. Okay? It's, it, to abolish is to do away with in whole. Not in part, not partially. They only partially altered the physical, I mean partially altered the conditions of or in the institution of slavery all right they did not do away with it they did not reverse it so slaves still exist today okay just an evolved form of the slave so this is the last part of the live now we're getting to the remedy the legal remedy for our 400 years this is what we are uh this is the injunction that we're filing that we have filed in the federal court this is the relief that we are seeking first of all we ask the court to order the United States to abolish slavery what do you mean abolish slavery slavery was abolished back in uh, 1863 with the 13th amendment and all of that stuff no look at this for failure to abolish slavery due to negligence in the 13th Amendment, this injunction requests the court to completely abolish slavery by ordering the cancellation, revoking, permanent termination of, and making illegal all ownership rights and licenses to the intellectual properties of one. Dehumanization as a manufacturing method to alter and reduce the genetic situation and status of humans to the condition of a slave. Two, slaves as a scientific production. Three, Slavery as a historic act of commerce and four trade secrets for historic and modified dehumanization methods with emergency legislative action of rewriting the 13th Amendment altogether with elected representatives of the slave derivatives ex elected by the slave derivatives living in America regarded as the sixth region of the African Union realizing Abraham Lincoln's neglect has exposed the 13th Amendment as invalid due to falsification and deception on a federal document. That is the foundation instrument, foundational instrument for decades worth of other legislation. People, this is a major, major monkey wrench in the, the constitutive and congre congressional process, you know, the legislative process. Perjury is not allowed on federal documents. So when and 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 so the Thirteenth Amendment, being a false false statement itself, is invalid by default of law. You can't lie on federal documents. And the Thirteenth Amendment told a lie, and now we went as far as to prove it with our legal argument that we filed and so since we proved that the 13th amendment told a lie it opens up the loophole that is the loophole that we can stand on now as 2020 year 2020 living black people in america so the second thing we we requested five things of the court the second thing we requested was to reverse engineer Africa's sixth region in America. Once again, I asked you the question, did they ever reverse the activities that they took, the actions that they took to create a slave? You see, everyone was focused on slavery. This is what this is the difference between the civil rights movement and, and every all the all the all the activists between then and now and my legal argument, our legal, arg our, our legal argument as the Prince Michael generation. Remember, Prince Michael in the Bible really stands for a generation of people. 
You know what I'm saying? Just like the four kings in the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. You know what I'm saying? You're not talking about one specific. You're talking about generations, cycles of time. All right? So, we now have the legal argument that Martin Luther King, Elijah Muhammad, Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, all of the other leaders overlooked this. They all focused on slavery. But see, slavery was an act of commerce. That's from the, com you're looking at it from the commercial side. The slave itself, I looked out through my, through my awakening to the Black Panther criminal report that, you know, thank, thank God, thank the ancestors, thank Mount Zion, thank everything, thank the universe, that the Oracle Sophia Stewart, mother and author of the Matrix and Terminator movie franchises, was able to enlighten me to intellectual property law enough to where when I came and now looked at the, the case of reparations, I saw slavery as an act of commerce and the slave being as the slavery being distinct from the slave. The slave itself was not an act of commerce. The slave of self was an act of science. It was a scientific production. The scientific production derived automatically intellectual property. And when you look and focus on the intellectual property of associated with the slave scientific process of slave creation, you now see a whole nother angle of legal actions, a whole nother approach of legal causes of action that do not have the limitation of statute, the, the limitation, the limiting factor of statute of limitations. Okay. So I'm, 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 I'm trying to give you all this breakdown and I can't see the comment. I don't know if anybody's commenting. So I, if you're asking questions, I can't see it. I apologize. Um, let me refresh my page. So maybe I don't know if there's any questions. I just want to make sure if y'all got any questions that, you know, I can go ahead and answer while we on live. But let me just tell y'all, this is deep. No, Dr. Leonard Jeffries, beloved elder, you know what I'm saying? Civil rights from the civil rights era, you know what I'm saying? Told me that this legal argument is heavy. He said, this is heavy, brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He said, that's heavy, brother. Um, 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 Major Mostella from the SCLC, another civil rights organization, you know, former president, told me this is heavy. He said, brother, we need the right team on this. So if there's any legal uh, professionals out there, I don't care if you're paralegal, lawyer, bar, whatever. If you and we got any civil rights activists out there, we need y'all to chime in, check in with me because we, we need it's time now that we want to turn this into a class action lawsuit that all of our people can can be a party to this this lawsuit, this class action lawsuit. Because this is an opportunity that doesn't come around often. We found a loophole, people. It took us what 50 years to find this, 40 years to find this. We got it. Let's do this right. I'm not a lead. I am not a quote unquote lawyer, you know what I'm saying? Or quote unquote attorney. You know, I do have power of attorney for Mount Zion. This was filed using the power of attorney for Mount Zion, which is a different legal status, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and lawful status, you know what I'm saying? But I am not a practicing lawyer. I don't quote unquote no law. So I need the strength of you brothers um, who actually do that. To take this and run with it. This is just the frame. This is the groundwork that the Most High led me to. You know what I'm saying? And and, and showed me through all my, my organic path. You see what I'm saying? Now we need help. It's time. I'm, this is an official call for help. <laughs> help us. Let's get let's get this going. Let's, so that all of our people can benefit. We already got it fouled. You see what I'm saying? Um, so where are we at? Um, we're talking about our relief. What we, the injunctions we filed and requested the court. <sighs> so we said, reverse engineer Africa's sixth region in America, acknowledging America as a melting pot. It will take a, cooperate, a cooperative effort of all people in the land to reverse the stain of slavery on American history. So we are requesting the court to order the United States to scientifically rehumanize all living and consenting slave derivatives and their descendants for a minimum of seven generations each generation considered as 28 years 
which is actually a very traditional and ancient concept. According to the scientific method, utilizing Black America's Mass Migration 2027 National Cooperation as the ideal and scientifically compliant flame framework to provide the controlled environments for reversing the dehumanization methods that created the genetic situation and status of slaves and enabled slavery. So people, oh man, see this, this, this form is a condensed version of a 14 page affidavit which we will break down that affidavit step by step in a different live but this is just update number five so we want to just give y'all the condensed version so y'all can get it step by step you see what I'm saying um they created us in controlled environment which is important for case law that is existing right now and we'll show that to you in the, in another vi in another video um and so when we're calling now for 40 black American cities to be built, 40 diplomatic shelters to be built, this is sound with the case law that's existing by from the Supreme Court. Um, as of, you know, June 2013, um, this is sound with the scientific method that is the responsibility of the United States um, Corporation, you know what I'm saying, to reverse the scientific method that created the, the 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 slave that was done in the controlled environment. So that means to to unrever or I mean to to reverse it to undo that you also need controlled environments. You cannot scientifically undo something that was done in a scientific in a controlled environment without using a controlled environment. Scientifically, you cannot do that. So it is the scientific responsibility to allow for controlled environments to be erected in 2020 in modern times specifically for black people only to exist in that environment in order to humanize rehumanize themselves we are owed a space scientifically legally morally, morally ethically universally naturally divinely our own space to fix the damage that was done to us four generations and we say seven generations all right we say seven generations minimum that is what we filed for that is what we can fight for and stand for that is what our remedy is giving us this is the remedy that we have pulled and it is let me also let let you know that we uh i want to announce on this day well matter of fact let me let me say that announcement for the end let me say that announcement for the end. okay so the third thing Third thing, the, the injunction is to sign the peace treaty with Africa's sixth region in America. People, do you understand how, how powerful that one sentence is? One sentence. We have ordered. Oh, let me just read. Let me just read. Y'all, man, look, don't get me turned up because that's just me. Acknowledging the essential role that fear played in the dehumanization method leveraged by the United States and its licensees all the white people free white people in America to manufacture slaves this injunction requests the court to consider the sensitivity of the psychological state of fear and trauma which the victims currently exist in by ordering the United States to develop and sign a peace treaty with the African American slaves in their full diplomatic capacity as the sixth region of the African Union and to require all political slash social slash economic slash legal slash other official engagements between the United States and the victims to be addressed through that diplomatic channel in order to offer a level of safety assurance providing evidence of state level cooperation and interest in atoning for the American slavery. So all of those politicians, those presidential candidates vying for black support in their uh, elective process, right? We now have a diplomatic platform to say, okay, all of y'all are saying you want to atone for slavery you want to bury the hatchet with the black community? Here's what you got to do. You have to agree to acknowledge the progress that we've made in the last 50 years since since the civil rights era. You have to 
acknowledge the, the diplomatic progress. We are now the sixth region of the African Union. We are now an organized body, an organized diplomatic body, an organ of the African Union. Just like Nigeria, just like Kenya, just like South Africa, just like Ghana, just like uh, uh, Gambia, just like Ethiopia, just like uh, Zimbabwe, just like Madagascar, just like Tanzania, Black America, Black Americans are now our own diplomatic body, government body. We have that paperwork and recognition already from every single country in Africa. 55 nations recognize us as equals to them. The presidents at the, at the presidential assembly, they gave us 20 seats to stand next to them. Not behind them, not in front of them, beside them. You heard on 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 the on the update that we did. You heard on the update that we did. Last update number 4. Check check update number 4. Just to recap. You will hear you will hear the 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 ambassador herself. See, she's speaking right there. You will hear the ambassador herself say that we need to engage as equals, capitalize, capitalize equal, partners. equal partners. Not higher, not lower, not, higher, but, equal. not lower, but equal. So you, you see what I'm saying? We have an existing, we have an existing partnership with the White House. Why didn't Umar Johnson tell you about that? Why didn't Boyce Watkins push you in that direction? Why isn't Brother Polite pushing you in that direction? Why isn't Sarah Sutton Seti pushing you in that direction? Why isn't Young Pharaoh pushing you in that direction? Why isn't Rizal Islam pushing you in that direction? Why isn't Farrakhan pushing you in that direction? Why isn't Jay Morrison pushing you in that direction? Nick Cannon, push him in that direction. T.I., push him in that direction. Killer Mike, push him in that direction. Let's use the successes, the accomplishments that we have already attained as a community. And let's build on those accomplishments. We already have a partnership. We already have a government. We already have diplomatic recognition. So we ain't complain about it. We put it into the paperwork. And we are now... Forcing the United States through this number three area of release, relief. We are forcing the United States to no longer sweep our diplomatic status under the rug when you address us. Address us as the diplomats that we are. But you know why? And once we got to bring this one right back to us. The African Union... They told us to elect four people, elect our representatives, elect our representatives for the rep, for the representatives uh, for uh, of, of Black America. Who's going to speak on a presidential level? Who's going to sit at the African Union? We still have not done that. So since we haven't done that, the the United States can easily sweep our diplomatic status under the rug because we haven't, as the people, we have not delegated that authority and that power to those four individuals so as long as we the people have not transferred and delegated our power by holding our own elections we really can't complain all that much now i can't scream on y'all be and on us i can which i'm screaming on myself when i say screaming on y'all i can scream on us we can scream on ourselves and get on our ass for not doing it but we as a collective can't really get on the United States for not recognizing our diplomatic capacity because we have not finished formulating it. They did their part. The presidents did their part by signing off 
on the paperwork. They signed the the constitutive act. You see what I'm saying? They did that. We and then they took then they put the ball in our court. They said, "Okay, now it's up to y'all. Y'all have to delegate y'all power to 20 individuals and four of them need to come from the United States." That's why I said four. I didn't say the other 16 cuz those other 16s are coming from other countries. Right now I'm talking about I'm focusing on the United States. I'm talking about America, the black people in America. We have not elected our four people. We have not delegated our power of as black America to those four people to represent the sixth region in America yet. So we can we can only scream but so loud. You see what I'm saying? That's why I'm telling the people with the black voices, Killer Mike, all of y'all, get the people to delegate their power and stop complaining. Stop running for office, Scarface. Stop running for these offices. Run for the sixth region. If you if you gonna run for city council, for a little city, in a corporation that does not that is not designed to serve our interests, that is designed to dehumanize us. Why don't you take that same energy and run for the sixth region in America? Be one of the four representatives. Of all black people in America, not for one little city, a little state. Stop the nonsense. Stop the nonsense. People, this shit is fuck. Let me, let me stop. <laughs> I'll be talking. I'm, I'm getting ready to talk to y'all like y'all my homeboys sitting right here in, 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 the, in, the, in the car with me. Or in the, in the crib with me, you feel me? Look, people who know me, y'all y'all know, I'm, I'm look. I'm I'm gonna get you right. See, that's why that's why these this why these so-called black leaders don't want to don't want to meet with me, cause I'm getting right down to the nitty gritty. I'm exposing those areas that ain't covered, that y'all ain't ain't y'all ain't tapped into yet. So you can't you can't argue with me. You can't say nothing to this, cause you ain't done it yet. You done tried everything else. You ain't tried this. And this is the best thing on the table. This is the best thing smoking. All right, let me get, we can get caught up now. Let me stop. Let me stop. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'll be forgetting people actually watching. Uh, and I know y'all got questions. So let me see if I can find. See, yes, I'll be getting so caught up, man. Let me see if anybody asks any questions real quick. As uh, equals to them. Turn apologize. Up. I'll be forgetting okay. people All right, actually nobody got no watching. questions. Uh, no one got no questions. All right, so let me just keep it moving. All right, so I'm going to finish this up. This is number four, number five, and then we're done because it's already, uh, I don't went <laughs> too damn long anyway. Uh, develop a mutable restitution agreement. Um, uh, let me just read. Unjust enrichment carries a mandatory restitution rule. Um, that means if you if you get charged with unjust enrichment, you may you, you unjust enrichment means you're making profit from illegal activity. So if you get caught doing that, you you it has a mandatory restitution. You have to pay that money back that you made, all right? So um acknowledging the astronomical debt of approximately one 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 quadrillion two hundred and eighty four trillion eight hundred and seventy six billion three hundred seventy two million seven hundred and sixty three thousand four hundred and eighty one dollars and ninety cents minimum owed to African American slaves being nearly unrealistic for one generation of African slaves to receive at one time and the extreme strain such justice would place on other citizens of the United States which is really citizens of the United States um, we're requesting the court to order the, U the United States to develop a mutable restitution agreement together with BAM 2027 and the sixth region of the African Union in America to identify the best strategies of leveraging the US resources including but not limited to finance tax credits insurance state-owned properties etc to atone for the crimes against African Americans by the state you know what I'm saying so um, um, this once again is a condensed version um, once we go over maybe an update uh, I don't know probably seven or eight um, not the next one but uh, we're going to we're going to you know go over the full legal argument the full affidavit you know what I'm saying that one may uh, shoot we, that one may take us uh, two hours you know what I'm saying because y'all see how I like to stop and make sure y'all got clarity on stuff <clears throat> um, um, that one what we'll probably do is we'll probably promote that one as a scheduled live and um, maybe Africa Liberation Day what we'll do maybe uh, May 25th Africa Day we'll go over the full the full um, affidavit you know what I'm saying? Uh, so y'all can understand how we arrived at this number. Why is it that they owe 
um, uh, one quadrillion, one point two eight quadrillion dollars um, through the, you know, legally, legally. This is not something that we just made up. This is a real legal argument that they cannot get out of. Um, okay, and um, boom. Um, last, lastly, uh, we are uh, filed the injunction um, to correct the 2009 apology for slavery. So, um, we are seeking the court to order as congruent, oh, sorry, concurrent resolution 26 apologizing for slavery to be rewritten for alleging that slavery was abolished when in fact it was not abolished as intellectual property right rights were retained and to officially acknowledge the reality of dehumanization, slaves, and slavery as intellectual properties and the benefits that continue to be received as a result of the negligence of Abraham Lincoln with the 13th Amendment. All right? That's concurrent resolution 26. I don't think y'all may not, some of y'all may not be familiar with um, what, this, what this is. So let me... Uh, let me <clears throat> and we're gonna end off with this <clears throat> okay so when you go to uh so you see um as concurrent um resolution 26 a concurrent resolution apologizing for the enslavement and race racial segregation of african americans okay so when you actually read it <clears throat> you'll say you'll see that you know it's a failed attempt to do exactly what they said they did they did not do it and and once again they committed perjury perjury on this federal document, I proved through our our legal document, you know, I'm saying through our uh, through our legal our, our legal argument, which is filed. You see, four 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 three. Once again, so when y'all see these numbers, four 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 three, that we talking about case number one nineteen CV one uh, 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 CV one nineteen dash four 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 three. Uh, we're talking about paperwork, historic paperwork that proved. The Thirteenth Amendment lied in it, contains perjury, and S Concurrent Resolution Twenty Six contains perjury. So they have to rewrite. They have to reapologize, like Ray J said, apologize. They have to reapologize to Black people, to Black America, and this time. When they re-apologize, they have to include slavery and dehumanization and slaves as intellectual properties. They have to acknowledge the fact that intellectual property, and I'm going to give y'all one. I'm going to give y'all one. Intellectual property. Intellectual property. Black's Law Dictionary. All right? I'm gonna show y'all one thing. Maybe I spelt it wrong or whatever. Let's see. Uh, intellectual property. I'm looking for the Black's Law Dictionary one. Either way, uh, maybe this one. <clears throat> well, Black's Law Dictionary. Well, what we have written in our in our in our uh, affidavit, which y'all will see in the other one, is that intellectual property rights is separate and distinct. From property rights, in general terms, intellectual property any uh, product of the human intellect that the law protects from unauthorized use by others. The ownership of, of intellectual property inherently creates a limited monopoly in the protected property. Intellectual property is traditionally comprised of four cap ca four categories: patent, trademark, uh, patent, copyright, trademark, and trade secrets. Um, <clears throat> and you know, y'all will see that this is separate. And distinct from property rights as blacks law dictionary states you know what I'm saying so um, that's it people um, thank you for tuning in yeah y'all see we've been we've been uh, taking our time to uh, go over this but we will end by saying this um, we filed this paperwork October 2nd um, and now uh, officially today we are announcing that we are now filing uh, for the court and the clerk to enter this case into default as we know 
they could not rebut this affidavit. They could not rebut the point. I mean, they've already apologized for it. So, I mean, we know they can't rebut it. But I don't think they expected us to find a loophole that would allow us to hold them um, liable now, you know, in 2020. Uh, because uh, like the, uh, the the first group of brothers and sisters who tried to get them in 2002 or 2004, they was able to get it dismissed based on statute of limitations. But this, this 1.2 quadrillion cannot be dismissed by statute of limitations because there is no statute of limitations on trade secrets. And once again, we are suing them for their use of trade secrets as is seen right there number four trade secrets for historic and modified dehumanization methods and trademarks as well you know black nigger negro every time they call you a nigger negro all of that stuff they're declaring usage of a trademark as long as you declare uses of a trademark in commerce the law keeps that trademark active so that means all the black negro nigger all of that shit is their trademarks that are able to get their ass sued again once more through this particular paperwork and framework. So if you haven't, if there are any legal professionals out there in internet land who, who can take this and, uh, you know, push it to the next level, you know. Um, me, I am, I'm an ambassador on several different levels. You know, y'all know I'm an ambassador from Mount Kenya. Um, but um, I'm also an ambassador for other um, government bodies, which, um, you know, we don't speak about um, publicly because, um, you know, it's, it's very, very touchy, very, very powerful. Um, some of the things I'm positioned to do for us um, and, um, you know, y'all know the situation. So y'all know how the beast plays. So. Um, just know I got us covered. Um, I do have the legal capacity to collect um, said restitution for us um, as a state. Um, so we can uh, get that doing going. But what I would like to do is I would actually like to turn this into a class action. So if we have an... Uh, you know, I did some mild research, but if we have any legal, any legal professionals out there who can just show us and walk us through, um, you know, getting this turned into a class action. That way, all all of our people in America can get their name on the paperwork. I want to see all of our names on this paperwork. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, let's do that. Let's do that. Fuck a petition. Excuse my language. Let's get everybody's names on this paperwork. Let's let's make let's hold them accountable. Let's do it. Let's do it. Matter of fact, that's my, that's my, that's my, uh, that's, that's my, uh, that's my, uh, my, um, ah, what you call it? My focus for the day. My call of, my call, my call of, uh, my marching orders for the day. I'm, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna find out how to turn this into a class action lawsuit. That way everyone, everyone can put their name on this and we can go ahead and, and, and put our foot on their neck. You know what I'm saying? And take our remedy. Oh, and the, the announcement was that we're moving this into default. They couldn't respond to this. We're moving it into default now. So we're, we're requesting that, you know, the, the court enter this into default and that, you know, that we get the default judgment on this. So we can just extract our remedy from this. We can just pull from our remedy. We already see our remedy, y'all, is autonomous black cities. Our remedy is a peace treaty with the United States of America. Our remedy is reverse engineering Africa 6. That means they got to leave us the F alone while we were while we were rehumanizing ourselves our remedy is them making illegal for people to own the intellectual property rights you know what i'm saying to slavery for people to use the word nigger black negro for us you know what i'm saying they know they, they shouldn't declare those trademarks anymore you feel me they gotta re-apologize you see what i'm saying mutable restitution agreement figure out how y'all gonna pay us now that's our remedy. We can go ahead and start extracting these. And let me let me finish off by saying this. This is one peace treaty. I'm going to tell y'all tell y'all the hidden peace treaty that we also have with this. 
And remember, the hidden means Amun. Amun is the hidden. When y'all y'all know the ancient Egyptian god Amun, this is the hidden. This deals with the feminine principle, which is the greater principle, the unseen things, you know, like the spirit, the soul. You see what I'm saying? The masculine principle is the seen, the tangible world, the physical world. The feminine principle is the unseen world. <clears throat> The unseen thing. So we're, I'm going to tell you about the unseen peace treaty that we also got um, with this movement. You know what I'm saying? With this national cooperation. I don't even want to call it a movement. BAM 2027 is a national cooperation. Unincorporated association. We are not registered on any white man's book. We are unincorporated association. You feel me? We. That's why we can start with a few and grow into many because we're not incorporated. This is not to benefit one person. This is to benefit everybody who's cooperating. And even our people who ain't cooperating, everyone's going to benefit. The whole world would benefit from this. Um, <clears throat> the peace treaty that is hidden is the black peace treaty. The peace treaty we got to sign within ourselves. We, the black community, has to sign peace treaty within itself. We have to call peace and a truce internally. An internal peace treaty. Not just holding the state, the United States, like they got to call peace with us. We got to call peace within ourselves. That's the hidden peace treaty. That's in the moon. That's the treaty I kept hidden. Because we need the most power. We need that feminine, that divine mother, that divine feminine principle to nurture that idea right there. Y'all let that soak for a minute. Just keep that in the moon dimension, in the moon dimension right now, that that subconscious area in your mind keep that in your mind while we holding the white man accountable understand that eventually we gonna have to sign our own peace treaty an internal peace treaty so y'all prepare your hearts and your minds for the true black peace treaty that's coming it's coming soon we ain't gonna push it right now right now you know what I'm saying? But we're going to push it soon. And, and everybody needs to be prepared for that. And eventually, we're going to have to call peace within ourselves, my people. Let that, let just let the message breathe on that. We're going to let it breathe on that. All right? Wadu Emanuelai, Wadu Emanuelai, Wadu Emanuelai, Aileya Islam, Shalom, Ali, Allah, Salam, Atep, Atep, Atep. Black power. We out.